ഹലോ ഒന്നും കേൾക്കുന്നില്ല ഞാൻ മിസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതാണോ തുടങ്ങാം പിന്നെ ഒരു കാര്യം നമ്മള് ഇതിന്റെ പ്രൊസീഡിയസ് എല്ലാം ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണല്ലോ അല്ലേ അതെ 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 Yeah, we'll start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good afternoon all and welcome to the second day of uh, the webinar series uh, hosted by National Safety Council uh, and HSC Forum as part of the 51st National Safety Week celebrations of 2022. we have a series of uh, uh, talks uh, scheduled from uh, 5th of march till 10th of march and this is the second day of uh, uh, our series so we have uh, our uh, eminent speaker dr abraham vargis uh, available with us uh, for handling the session uh, before heading into that uh, session i invite uh, uh, sri umar sir to have welcome address sri umar sir is our uh, retired joint director of department of axis and boilers and is associated with the national safety council of kerala chapter uh, for several years he is an eminent uh, faculty as well as uh, uh, personal in the field of uh, safety as well as fire engineering and on various topics so i welcome uh, umar sir uh, to have his welcome address over to you umar sir Good, good evening all uh, as mr uh, uh, vibin uh, mentioned this year national safety council kerala chapter is organizing the safety week with a safety webinar series and uh, today uh, we have a very good uh, uh, an eminent person uh, who is well known to us he was associated with the national safety council also uh, dr abraham vargis uh, and uh, uh, he has uh, he is going to uh, uh, take a class for the activities related to the image that is the kerala's first biomedical waste treatment facility you know uh, we all know that uh, environment protection act 1986 was uh, enacted and uh, it is considered as an umbrella act and under the uh, environmental protection act we have uh, a number of rules msic rules then uh, 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 other uh, hazardous waste management rules uh, battery rules etc and one important uh, rule is the biomedical waste management rules it was uh, first enacted in uh, 1986 and uh, it was amended in uh, 2006 now it is a biomedical waste management rules Uh, 2016, not 2006, 2016. Uh, all the details extra, Dr. Abraham Vargas will be uh, discussing. Uh, my, uh, as you know, uh, the present uh, problem faced with uh, uh, our uh, community or our uh, entire people is uh, regarding the waste. And uh, one Uh, aspect that is being covered by this is the biomedical waste that is gener generated in the hospitals and other uh, uh, healthcare uh, facilities so we we have a system wherein the hospitals they uh, have some processing at their site that is incinerator etc but still some more waste will be there that has to be taken to a common uh, treatment plant and uh, it has to be properly uh, uh, handled and uh, disposed so in that respect uh, the uh, palakkad uh, ima has uh, uh, installed the first plant in palakkad and uh, uh, they are uh, rendering a very good service to the society so uh, uh, we have uh, with us uh, dr abraham vargis uh, who is the chairman of uh, image palakkad 
he was uh, uh, the past uh, president of uh, uh, indian medical association kerala uh, state and uh, before that also he was uh, uh, known to all of us he was a uh, uh, for one time he was the secretary of national safety council then uh, occupational health in that uh, respect uh, uh, he was a uh, having uh, so much of uh, years of experience uh, and uh, uh, convener or chairman of the blood bank so he is in this uh, field and uh, uh, i have attended his, his classes regarding ergonomics first class, uh, first aid etc so he he is a person who will uh, explain the things in a very simple way so that uh, all of us can understand so on behalf of the hsc forum national safety council and uh, on my personal behalf i extend a very warm welcome to dr abraham vargis then we have uh, uh, the hsc forum uh, uh, chairman uh, mr nanda kumar is a senior uh, vice president of uh, uh, carborundum universal uh, he is a uh, instrumental in organizing or reviving the activities of the hsc forum and a, a lot of talks have uh, materialized in this forum so uh, i welcome uh, dr uh, nanda kumar senior vice president uh, carbon random for this uh, webinar then uh, uh, controlling uh, this uh, activities of the proceedings uh, we have uh, uh, mr vipin 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 das who is a ehs head of sudkami india private limited then uh, uh, i was a little bit late for joining i think uh, uh, mr rafiq is there rafiq ms yeah rafiq uh, is, is not there cinema manager yes, okay. ah, in, instead of uh, uh, rafiq we have vipin das okay so uh, then uh, we have uh, to extend the word of thanks we have uh, mr radhakrishnan he is a uh, deputy general manager of uh, carbon and universal i uh, extend a uh, hearty welcome to mr radhakrishnan also then uh, uh, we have uh, uh, officials of uh, uh, national safety council and hsc forum here uh, dr ramesh then meenu vijayan and other persons uh, and uh, participants uh, i think uh, uh, this will be a very useful session so uh, i uh, once again uh, extend my hearty welcome to one and all uh thanks a lot thank you umar sir uh, umar sir for your welcome address uh, uh now we have uh, the speaker with us for handling the session um uh, dr abraham vargis uh, he is an eminent uh, personality in the field of uh, occupational health and occupational medicine he is having a rich experience of uh, around uh, three decades in various industrial establishments Uh, to name a few are uh, the naval armament depot indian aluminium company binani singh etc he has worked as the medical superintendent uh, in medical trust hospital uh, and at present uh, he is the uh, uh, medical officer in ima blood bank cochin as well as the chairman of image uh, he was the uh, past president of ima and the chairman of image presently he is graduated from medical college alappi and has a fellowship in industrial medicine from central naval institute bombay he was awarded the best factory medical officer in 2009 by ministry of labor uh, and uh, uh, he is continuously serving the national safety council and was the past uh, honorary secretary of national safety council kerala chapter uh, i welcome dr uh, abraham uh, vargis uh, uh, to the forum and for handling uh, the session on waste management for public safety sharing of activities of image kerala's first biomedical waste treatment facility so over to you sir uh, for your session thank you thank you very much is it visible to you the slides hello not yet. slides uh, is not yet shared ah, just a minute
Yeah, it's visible now. Yeah. Over to Dr. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, just to intervene, Dr. Uh, yeah. in case of any uh, uh, in case of any uh, queries or clarifications, uh, is it okay to uh, clarify in between, or we will have the question answer session in the last? We can have the question answer session later. Okay, so over to you, sir, for your uh, session. And Thank I you. request everyone to mute your uh, mics and then uh, for the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, respected uh, chairman of National Safety Council, Mr. Pramo, uh, all the dignitaries of the National Safety Council, my friend Nandagumar, Umar, all, uh, all dear ones. So glad to see you once again after a long, long time. Uh, I was also a factory worker for almost three decades. Uh, we have uh, come across many times, many, uh, many places. Uh, uh, I'm so uh, glad to be associated with uh, National Safety Council, especially I'm so happy that I am invited uh, as for this lecture series, which starts from 5th to 10th. I wish all the very best to the National Safety Council and this Safety Week uh, celebrations also. This subject is a dull subject, I know. So I, I don't know how far uh, you'll be interested to hear, listen to this. But I will try my best to, moreover, it is a Sunday afternoon. It's a sleepy afternoon. So uh, I will try to make it uh, you know more interesting to you to the extent possible. I will talk to you for 30, 35 minutes, and then we will have a question and answer session after that. Thank you very much once again. So we move on to the first slide. That is the management of the biomedical waste. This, what I'm going to tell you is the experience of the Indian Medical Association. And uh, this year, uh, I have taken over in November 2021. I've taken the theme as the image, the panacea for all biomedical waste. Now, image stands for Indian Medical Association goes eco-friendly. That is a full form of image. This is the flagship project of the Indian Medical Association, which was commissioned in 1983 and the operation started in 1984. This was basically meant for the scientific handling and the management of the biomedical waste generated in all the healthcare institutions in Kerala. Today, I'm going to interact with you based on the hazards involved, the domestic biomedical waste, the hospital waste, the rules, how image was uh, formed, how to segregate the biomedical waste in the future plans and how you can join this. Now, when we talk about BMW, uh, we always have this car in our mind, you know, but I'm taking you to a different uh, world altogether. I hope you all know what BMW series stands for. It's Bavarian Motor Works. Nothing to do with the biomedical waste. So uh, from here I start. See, in the picture, you can see the need of a biomedical waste management. See, from the hospital, there are a lot of infections which can spread spread to the entire society, to the entire world, starting from AIDS, hepatitis, uh, you know, a lot of other infections. Now, when we talk about the definition of biomedical waste, it means any waste generated during the diagnosis, treatment, or immunization of human beings or animals, or in research act. Remember, it's, it can be human beings, animals, or research activities. Now, these are the different activity areas, which you see, you can have a, a microscope, a broken microscope, syringes, you know, uh, a dentist, imagine a dentist uh, with all his instruments. You, you see a baby being carried by a doctor. Uh, imagine if the baby is dead, dead fetus. See, you, you, you can bury a dead fetus, but when it is uh, in the early phase, like up to six weeks, uh, six months, that is 24 uh, weeks, we take care of that 
dead fetus as a biomedical waste. So if the activity areas can be a diagnostic area, operation theater, labor room, treatment rooms, everywhere. Now, when you consider the hospital waste, it is basically general waste. It can be liquid waste and the biomedical waste. Now, when you take the healthcare waste, almost 85% is non-infectious. Only 10% is the infectious one and the 5% is the hazardous one. But remember, when you mix the 10% infectious, 5% hazardous with the 85% non-infectious, the entire waste becomes infectious. That is the problem which we are going to face. Now in Kerala, the scenario, we have the largest number of healthcare institutions in India, which contributes about 50 to 60 tons of waste per day. And the waste generated in each bed in the each hospital roughly comes to 500 grams to two kilos every day. And when you consider the entire waste, 30 to 35 percent is bandages, infectious waste, linen and all those things. Plastics is about 7 to 10 percent. The syringes comes to 0.3 to 0.5. And the glass is about uh, broken glasses, uh, broken glasses, uh, broken uh, slides, all those things up to 3 to 5 percent. And the general waste is 40 to 45 percent. It is not being included here. Now, the problems associated with that, as you know, the organisms can be viruses, bacteria, parasites, and the related uh, issues uh, can be many, starting from, uh, you know, a normal infection to typhoid, cholera, AIDS, infectious hepatitis, chalas, or malaria, all these things can result. And uh, uh, with the items like uh, infected needles, body fluids, human excreta, and uh, various other uh, human based. Nosocomial infections are infections which are being generated from hospitals. Imagine when you go to a hospital, you are sick, but in the, in there are some conditions where when you walk into the hospital, you don't have that infection, but later in the hospital, you acquire certain infections that is called a nosocomial infections. Now, there are drugs which has to be disposed of. There is air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, all those things. Now, needle stick injury is a major problem which we come across. One needle stick injury from a needle from an infected patient have risk of 30% of hepatitis B virus, 1.8% uh, hepatitis C virus, and 0.3% HIV also. Now, the route of transmission can be inhalation when you take it through your respiratory tract. You have the, the next is uh, contact with the skin. The third is ingestion. Now, what is the effective management or the scientific disposal of the biomedical waste? So, Long back when this uh, issue came up, in that way back in 98, when the central government came up with this, the then uh, Chief Minister Eric Antony uh, invited Indian Medical Association for a discussion. And that was the time when we were uh, thinking of starting a biomedical base. We never had any exposure with this treatment plant. Now, the rule 2016, as mentioned by Uma, says the hospitals have to ensure safe management of the waste. The waste can be human anatomical waste, blood, body fluids, syringes, bandages, gloves, etc. Now, the rule, Government of India, Ministry of Environment, notification dated 28-3-2016. That's why we call it as BMW Management Rules 2016. Now, three things have to be taken care of in 2016 very clearly. One is applicable to those who generate, collect, receive, store, transport, treat, dispose, handle biomedical waste. It is the entire responsibility of the institution. The second, of course, says institution has to ensure proper disposal. And the third, biomedical waste cannot be kept for more than 48 hours. And the duty is very clearly, they say, when you have a healthcare institution, 
around a kilometer of 75 you are not supposed to have an independent biomedical waste unit plan in your hospital means to say when there is a common biomedical waste facility in a, a radius of 75 kilometers you are supposed to give your biomedical waste to that organization you know why because this biomedical waste uh, treatment plant is definitely expensive it is uh, causing uh, pollution to the environment and uh, having individual uh, uh, you know biomedical waste segregation plants definitely is havoc to the human beings and to the environment also. so the duties are segregation and safe storage training of the safety immunization uh, staffs treatment of the liquid waste and biomedical these are the hazard symbols which you are familiar with. And uh, the rule again says uh, autoclaving should be done in temperatures and the pressure retention time. Everything is specified about it. Then the rule again says that every bag which is uh, being in which you collect the biomedical waste has to have a barcode. This is basically for tracking of the waste, identification and uh, quantification of the biomedical the barcodes are specific for uh, the different types of bags which you use, maybe yellow bag or red bag, which I'm coming to. And this is what uh, the, uh, the Pollution Control Board is uh, looking after. The Central Pollution Control has, Board has got its norms for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, the primary and secondary chamber, what is the temperature there. Everything is being monitored in their uh, online continuous stack emission monitoring system. Now, the question right in front of you is, is, is it practical to have separate individual biomedical waste treatment facility? It is not uh, possible. You cannot have individual biomedical. Individual, of course, as I mentioned, is expensive. The manpower is uh, required more, environmental nightmare, and the healthcare cost. Now, we were thinking as to how to implement this. You all know, the story of the Daba wireless. They provide the hot food from the houses, pick up from uh, late morning, and uh, take it to the person, individual concerned by noon. That's the great work which is being done by the Daba wireless in Bombay. We imbibed uh, ideas from here and uh, thought of uh, having a common biomedical waste treatment facility. Then, of course, the land was the problem. Thank God we got some uh, 23 acres of land in Palakkad district near to uh, Malambura. And there we started this IMA goes eco-friendly plant way back in 2003. The operations were started in 2004. And as on today, this is what uh, the entire India uh, the common biomedical waste treatment plants, uh, the total number is about 210. In Kerala, we have uh, two plants. The one, the first one uh, is uh, of Indian Medical Association. Second one belongs to the KEIA. Now, in the basic bi uh, biomedical waste management, the first and foremost is segregation. Whether it is at home or office, the segregation is the most important part. Then we have Transportation in the healthcare facility, like uh, imagine a big hospital, like Medical Trust Hospital. You have uh, different uh, departments, different sections, different boards. Uh, we cannot go and collect it from all the different uh, departments. So we ask them to have a final storage point from where we can collect the healthcare, uh, uh, you know, that particular healthcare facilities waste from there. Now, they keep it uh, on a temporary basis and uh, we collect it every day from there and it is being transported to Palakkad because that's the only plant in Kerala which is approved by the State Pollution Control Board as well as the Central Pollution Control Board. And now there we treat and uh, final dispose. Now, before we take uh, a hospital as a member, 
we train the staff uh, on how to handle the biomedical waste. The second level training, of course, is hands-on training where we distribute necessary literatures and retraining also is done for the staff who is involved. In it. Now, I told you about this, uh, you know, why we, the importance of the segregation where I told you 85% is non-infectious, but when you put the 10% of infectious and 5% uh, hazardous one, then the entire 100% becomes, uh, you know, infectious. Now, the uh, idea of waste segregation is to minimize the waste, decrease the hazards involved, avoid the illegal misuse, infection control within the hospital and outside, effective management of the biomedical waste and uh, statutory compliance. Now, biomedical waste can be classified as uh, incinerable and non-incinerable. Incinerable, you know, uh, it is collected in yellow containers which contain yellow liner bags. Incinerable waste can be anything uh, uh, of this sort, post-operative organs, plants and plaster paris, microbiological waste, cotton, bandage, everything. Non-incinerable is the one which cannot be burned. So there are four uh, categories which uh, is being segregated into. The first is the incinerable one. The red is the red bags are the autoclavable bags where it is autoclaved and it is basically the plastics. Then we have sharps, you know, like scalpels, blades and all those things in white. In blue, we have two categories. One is uh, specifically for the glass. Uh, broken glasses, slides, and uh, beakers, or whatever it is. Then uh, another blue is for the metals, like, uh, you know, in surgical cases where we implant nails, you know, uh, many other things. Now, this is just to have an idea about the different bags. Uh, I'll take you to the slides one by one. First is the yellow bags. Yellow bags are basically the post-operative body parts, the pathological waste, the dressing materials, uh, all these comes in the yellow bags, which are burnt. Red bags, of course, is for autoclaving. We have syringes without needles, IV sets, of course, without needles, catheters, gloves, urine bag, dialysis kit, all this comes in the red bags. See, when we, I told you about the red bags, but this is uh, what has happened from when, I, when we collected the waste from a hospital where they have put all the needles in the red bag. You're not supposed to keep the needles. Imagine uh, the people working there who are supposed to segregate this. They can have a needle stick injury. Always, uh, uh, you know, we show such pictures and we remind them that this should not be done. If uh, you are repeating the same mistake, uh, we stop collection from that particular institution. Then we have the white uh, puncture-proof containers, which uh, have syringes with uh, needles, fixed needles. Then the needles separate, the blades, scalpels all come in the white containers. Then the blue containers, I told you two types of blue containers. One is exclusively for the glass ampules, lab slides, and the second is for the implants, the scissors, all the metal uh, parts. This is the final on-site storage point for uh, all the hospitals where uh, they bring from their different departments. And there we have a QR code sticking onto the final point where the picker who comes to pick all these waste has to, uh, uh, you know, read that uh, QR code so that uh, we know from where, which hospital it is. Kind of. So segregation is very important. And uh, as I mentioned, QR code is provided at, uh, by image to all the final storage point. And uh, this should be kept in a clean room with lock and key. And uh, from each uh, institution when we collect it, this is, uh, from when you look at the picture, you can see the red back, uh, the affiliation number is Ernaklam.0035. That belongs to the IMA voluntary donor blood bank. So we, from each bag, we know from where we collect it. Now, coming to the major problem, almost 70% of our uh, expenses are all for the transportation. As you know, from Parashala to Kasargod, if you collect the waste, 
it has to be brought to palakkad so this has to be in special uh, containers fully covered with all the emblems and all those things we have 72 vehicles which runs on the road which runs about 14000 kilometers per uh, per day all the 72 together it is all fitted with gps so that we know where uh, it is struck if by any chance which vehicle is on the road which vehicle is at particular hospital this we come to know from this so as you know the teamwork divides the task and uh, multiplies the success we have a mobile app uh, through this particular app the details of the healthcare institution from which uh, the biomedical waste is collected will be registered and the data will be uh, transmitted to the server now taking you to the different uh, uh, you know uh, methods by which we take care of the biomedical waste first is the incineration second is autoclaving then the shredding and the effluent treatment plant as on today we have five incinerators five autoclaves shredders three and uh, generators this is uh, a typical incinerator is a double uh, chamber primary and secondary chamber you see in the first chamber it is 800 degrees centigrade the second chamber is uh, uh, 1050 degrees centigrade from it is all uh, all the uh, air plast yellow waste the red waste is plastic it is only the yellow waste is put in the primary chamber and the fly ashes are all uh, burned off in 1050 secondary chamber so that we have only ash which uh, remains uh, that is the uh, uh, incinerated ash which uh, is being uh, given to the kal in our uh, brahmapur now this is the incinerator the modified version which uh, you see with two chambers and uh, Uh, on the bottom left you see the rotary incinerator which can function for 24 hours continuously and uh, the second process is of course the autoclaving which is uh, normally doing uh, being done in hospitals it is basically uh, you are passing steam uh, a hot steam for a specified a, a time so at the end of the process uh entire micro organisms will be completely destroyed this is the autoclave uh, which you see with uh, uh, where the pollution control board has given specifications as to the temperature and uh, the the time taken for uh, autoclave this is the auto, uh, i told you the red bags of course uh, plastics one which goes into the autoclave autoclave one is uh, taken out and uh, segregated this is how the segregation this is where uh, the problem comes uh, last week uh, i had been to the plant ee oru red bag thornappam adinathu rendu karikku undayiru aa rendu hospitalil kudicha karikinte rendu idum kuda ee red bag il ittingi thandu vittirikkaya ee paavam thollaligal എടുത്ത് ഇത് ഓരോന്നും മാറ്റുന്ന അവരുടെ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ട് നമ്മളൊന്ന് ചിന്തിക്കണം യെസ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ദ ഷ്രെഡർ ദീസ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഐറ്റംസ് വിച്ച് ആർ ഓട്ടോ ക്ലെയിം ആർ ടേക്കൺ ഇൻ ദ ഷ്രെഡർ വെയർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കട്ട് ഇൻ ടു സ്മോൾ പീസസ് ആൻഡ് സി ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ഷ്രെഡർ മെഷീൻ വെയർ ദ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്സ് ദ സിറിഞ്ചസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദിസ് കട്ട് ഇൻ ടു സ്മോൾ പീസസ് ആൻഡ് വിത്ത് എ കോമ്പാക്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കംപ്രസ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് എ ബ്ലോക്ക് ഇസ് ഫോം സോ ദറ്റ് Uh, it is easy to be transported coming to the needles needles we have no way of disposing of the needles because as is there is no takers for the needles though it is uh, sterilized and all so again the needles are cut into small pieces and uh, it is being uh, you know uh, stored in concrete wells uh the only problem is it occupies a, a lot of space so that uh, these needles uh, are has to be stored there itself now coming to the effluent treatment plant we have a facility for about 4.0 lakh liters of water uh, being uh, treated and now i am taking you uh, for a inside view of the image biomedical waste treatment plant this is the road Uh, in between the forest on either side we have the forest 
which leads to a private land which you have purchased uh, uh, 23 acres and now this road was very difficult about uh, 2.5 kilometers uh, it was through the forest it was very difficult so we have uh, with the support of the forest department we have uh, uh, made it a pakka road now this is the entrance uh, seeing is believe you can see for yourselves what's happening inside the different uh, uh, locations we have kept it very beautifully environment friendly this is the incinerator uh, the plant where we have uh, kept the incinerator and uh, see the on the left hand side the autoclaves five ones the yellow bags kept there this is the, the staff restroom we have an ambulance for uh, we have about uh, uh, roughly about 800 uh, employees working throughout kerala um, in the plant itself we have about uh, 600 employees this is the effluent treatment plant and uh, we have a hospital run by uh, image in association with uh, the avitis clinic of palakkad this is the hospital which is officially inaugurated when i was the state president which is functioning uh, for the basically for the employees and also for the local people they also come and uh, get treatment from this white is clean these are the this is the crowd the people who are working there and at the end of the day this is how they go out now the opportunities and challenges uh, there are, it's many 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 i should say we are uh, passing through the most difficult time now growing through the crisis time and this is worst tragedy we have come across on january 16 2022 we have when we had a major fire where we lost about 2 crores of rupees this is a collection shed where we were collecting the materials which uh, come from hospitals this was being uh, after the initial processing this was kept in a shed about 16000 square uh, uh, 16000 square feet uh, building uh, was on fire uh, on 16 it burned for almost 5 days continuously we couldn't help the fire their fire force was there in the uh, area was there six trucks were there for 5 days uh, but uh, Uh, see this is this is this is the major problem which we have uh, come across and uh, we are trying our uh, level best to overcome this situation thank god uh, though the, the, we had this major fire you must have seen in the social media and all those things uh, there are three things uh, which i should say was on the positive side one was of course there was no human casualty when the, the, such a major fire the second of course the, the the fire never couldn't spread to the other areas because we removed all the waste in that area so that uh, the fire was limited to that particular shed and the third of course uh, uh, thank god uh, we we could run the plant uh, 24 hours even uh, from uh, that night onwards because we could we didn't stop the work because as you know about 50 to 60 tons of waste is coming every day so we cannot stop the work the second uh, challenge which we are coming across the many people uh, complain of this domestic domestic biomedical waste which is generated as a result of healthcare activities at home you will be wondering as to how uh, you can have biomedical waste at home you will be surprised to see in uh, multi storied uh, apartments uh, there is a need for uh, a biomedical waste disposal see now when you look at this picture you know what are the different waste which are generate syringes the, when you have diabetic patient that who insulin syringes discarded medicines cotton swabs got medicine bottle the list is so many Uh, sanitary napkin is again uh, a major issue see think of these items there are many items to be added in that uh, discarded medicines drips and swabs syringes pads uh, catheters colostomy bags these are plenty in uh, residential apartments now when you 
think of the quantity of the waste treated per day in tons the maximum is uh, incinerable waste then we have autoclavable wa waste which is uh, going for recycling then we have bottle shops discarded medicines and uh, a new project which we have started is kaumara sri project as i mentioned sanitary napkins are uh, a major problem for uh, many uh, girls school women colleges uh, this is a major problem we have uh, in association with the local ima branch we have extended our services to the institutions because sanitary napkins also belong to the biomedical waste category so that uh, we help them out it is only they have to pay only uh, no affiliation fees it is only the service charges which we collect 700 rupees per month so sanitary napkins is not a problem uh, right now we call it as uh, kaumara sri project now coming to the biomedical waste details uh, as i mentioned uh, 50 to 60 tons of biomedical waste almost 30 32 to tons come in the yellow bags then red bags 20 to 22 tons and 4 to 5 tons are bottles and 1 uh, ton is shops now as far as the image plan is concerned the sanction capacity is 55.8 tons per uh, day and the installed capacity is about 68 tons we have plans to start uh, the, the similar plants in many other locations but the problem here is uh, we have purchased uh, one Eight acres of land in Trivandrum, uh, Palo, but uh, the local people are not permitting us to uh, go to that plan at uh, that location even. Yet another uh, project which we are thinking of having it in uh, Brahmapuram. There we the government has allotted uh, uh, three acres of land, but uh, the issue is uh, the possession. Though we have the possession, still uh, the government has not given permission to start the plan. now uh, imagine uh, the biomedical waste being taken to palakkad until and unless uh, even though a small state as i mentioned earlier healthcare institutions are plenty we have to have at least two plants one in the mid zone and one in the southern sector otherwise we cannot move as of today we are catering to 20619 healthcare institutions in kerala of which uh, private are definitely more comes to 18000 plus and uh, government healthcare institutions it includes government uh, institution uh, centers government hospitals and esi hospitals also are being included there now how do i join in image this is the website you all can visit this website imageima.org you are uh, welcome to see this uh, website and uh, you you can always post your comments uh, in this now as far as uh, the address is concerned uh, this is image office uh, ima headquarters are near up your trandrum and this is the phone numbers you so donate red spread green and say blue and uh, you will be wondering as to how the rates are it is red uh, rates are uh, given in the bottom where uh, Uh, for major hospitals uh, depending on the number of beds they have to pay two charges what is the affiliation charge affiliation is one time payment where uh, 1500 rupees uh, per bed uh, this is one time payment then we collect service charges as on today the service charges is 6 rupee 35 paise per bed per day Uh, in private institutions and uh, in government institutions we charge only 6 rupee 10 paise per day per bed but no affiliation fees for the government institutions and in the small uh, clinics and the small uh, dental clinics and all we collect 6000 rupees as affiliation and 860 rupees as uh, the monthly service charge affiliation uh, process is given a detailed uh, one in uh, our website you can get all the details from there the services uh, provided to the healthcare institutions is uh, trainings uh, retraining and all those things now uh, it is the largest common facility in uh, in southern india i should say covers uh, 14 districts 
20,000 plus healthcare institutions covering about 1 lakh plus vets in Kerala. And uh, this is the entire uh, team of image team. I mentioned about uh, 800 staff working day and night for us. And this is in addition to about uh, 65 dedicated doctors uh, who are also working their free time for image. So we do all these things with caring minds and uh, helping hands. And uh, the, the entire message can be read from this slide. Let the waste of the sick not contaminate the lives of the healthy. So it is your responsibility to, to see that you take care of your biomedical waste, not only for uh, your uh, institution or your house, it, it is to make sure that uh, environment is protected very well. So thank you very much for the patient listening. It is our responsibility to take care of the society. Thank you very much. If you have yeah. any questions, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Abraham Murgis, uh, for the nice and uh, uh, warm speech. And uh, it was very elegant as well as very precise on how the activities are being handled in uh, image uh, as far as biomedical waste management is concerned. Now, the forum is open uh, to questions, uh, and we also have some questions in the chat box. So if, you, if anybody of you have uh, questions to ask, Please uh, feel free to ask. Can anybody read out from the chat box and help me out? Yeah, no issue. I'll I'll be reading out. Uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, questions. Uh, one Mr. B uh, one first question Mr. Binoj Nair has asked. Uh, what happens to glass and metal waste after reaching image? Yeah, this is uh, the glass is uh, broken and uh, into small chips, and this is being sent to Tamil Nadu where they have multiple uses. They say uh, it is crushed, in fact, and uh, sent for recycling. The glass is gone for recycling. And and the, uh, and he has he has also asked about metal waste. Metals, uh, of course, uh, metals is one problem. As same similar to the needles, metals. As on today, we have the certain uh, agencies who collect the metals from us and they melt it and uh, reuse it. But the needles, nobody is uh, there to pick it from there. All this is after the treatment process. We have kept the needles in that uh, concrete wells, but uh, nobody is there to pick it up. Yeah. Uh, has it been clarified? It, it, the plastics and the uh, metals go for recycling. Yeah, okay. Thank you, doctor. And the second question is whether we require uh, biomedical authorization from Pollution Control Board. Mr. Vijay Kumar, we has asked the question. Biomedical waste uh, plant has to have uh, authorization from the PCB, not only really from the State Pollution Control Board, as well as from the Central Pollution Control Board also you need clearance. And uh, they have fixed certain norms which we have to comply. And uh, all the healthcare institutions in India has to follow the norms prescribed by the PCB. So any uh, hospital or any clinic when they start with, they have to get license from PCB. Of course, because, uh, what they insist is that you should have a uh, facility to dispose of the biomedical waste. Either there are only two agencies right now, either through uh, image or through KEA. That is the only uh, uh, you know, available source now. Thank you, doctor. Uh, yeah. Anybody has any any questions to ask? Otherwise, I will uh, read the questions from the chat box. Uh, Somebody has raised their if, hand. Of course. 
Yeah. Anybody who have any questions, please, please feel free to ask the question. Somebody has raised the hand, you can ask the question. Let me see who has raised the hand. Uh, unmute and then uh, ask. You will be in mute for uh, Please unmute and then. Yeah. Okay, sir. Then you can move on to the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sir, uh, uh, I personally have a question to ask. Yeah. See, basically, yeah. Uh, the uh, the thing is, uh, in the in the condition in this situation for COVID, do you have uh, not only from hospitals, we have a lot of uh, FLTCs and other areas where the uh, uh, biomedical waste, yeah, especially yeah. Red, yellow, so red, the blue. Thank you so much yeah. for raising that uh, comment uh, question. Uh, because of the time restrictions, I could not go into detail into that. This is regarding yeah. the COVID base you are asking. Now, yeah, okay. uh, so, for your information, my... the COVID base started uh, from 2020 onwards. Till May, we could cover uh, the you know the entire waste which we collected. But what has happened from uh, 2020 middle was the COVID waste. Uh, has to be, uh, you know, collected separately, has to be treated separately. Now, what has happened is uh, May 2020 onwards, uh, to start with, uh, it was only two tons or three tons of COVID based, but towards the end of uh, 2020 and 21, it has gone up to 27 tons per day COVID based. Imagine from all these uh, FLTCs and uh, you know, uh, various uh, hospitals where they were taking the COVID base. So that was the biggest and headache for us. And this waste, of course, has to be treated. You know, till December uh, 2021, we have treated 10,000 tons of COVID waste. Imagine the quantity, 10,000 tons of COVID waste till December 2021. And this is the maximum, uh, I tell you, if, when you take the entire country, Kerala has generated the maximum COVID based. Anyway, thank God uh, we could somehow uh, treat that. But uh, I am, uh, you know, it's quite unfortunate to see that the government so far never appreciated the work which we were doing. And uh, they got various awards from various uh, agencies, but nobody thought how this COVID waste is taken care of. And uh, imagine if this COVID waste was not properly segregated, not, not properly treated, the, the, the issue which we were uh, facing, imagine the number, it would have been multiplied into many uh, in the number of patients and all. Thank God uh, yeah. we could clear all the uh, COVID waste. Thank you for raising yeah. that question. Uh, so my question uh, that was only one part my my question is basically uh, uh, if uh, we are having a, uh, the waste from the fldc it will be containing almost all the types of samples uh, including the rt pcr or uh, rapid antigen test samples or whatever it may be which contains the contagious uh, elements of the covid 19 so in image uh, do we follow any type of uh, biosafety levels uh, in handling such type of waste these wastes, of course, are biomedical wastes. They are categorized accordingly in yellow, red bags, and all those things. Of course, uh, 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 no, as you mentioned, uh, you mentioned about the safety. What was that you mentioned? Yeah. The bio handling of micro, basically, that uh, microorganisms or, uh, or something like that requires some bio safety levels, level one, two, four, categorization, was... EP, and other things. So whether such things are being followed? Uh, 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 no, sir. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I I won't be able to, able to give you a proper answer for that because uh, the, the, uh, the this was treated as the other biomedical waste, but it was uh, separately uh, you know done. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Sir, uh, one, sir, one question, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, you you have sir you have mentioned about the 
setting up of a small small incineration units for each hospital what are the difficulties practical difficulties no for that? i told you we we cannot have uh, separate incinerators in uh, all the plants the problem is first number one it's an expensive uh, affair it is uh, where you uh, the the manpower uh, is more then you are uh, you know polluting the environment so the government has come up with a rule in 2016 which very clearly says that you can have only one common biomedical waste treatment plant in 75 kilometers radius okay. means to say that in if you have a plant in palakkad uh, if you belong to in the, the 75 kilometers radius if you have a starting a hospital with a separate incinerator plant the government will not give be giving you the sanction for that so if yeah. you belong in that case you will have to give it to the common biomedical waste treatment facility if you don't have a common biomedical waste treatment facility within the 75 kilometers you can definitely have uh, one uh, you know incinerator there but uh, mushrooming of uh, you know the biomedical waste treatment plant uh, is what uh, the uh, the government has in mind that is what they want to uh, you know avoid that that is why they say this 75 kilometers this but uh, there is one condition there by any chance if in that particular area the number of beds is more than 10000 you can have one more plant for example in uh, ernakulam district where uh, we have uh, kal now with the biomedical waste treatment plant because the number of beds in eraglum comes to over 16000 uh, beds when you put uh, together so th there is scope for one more plant in eraglum uh, not only really in eraglum it can be in kottayam it can be idki it can be thrissur anyway 75 kilometers uh, radius sir uh, one more questions Sir, yeah. in the stacks, um, um, uh, the CPCB they are monitoring all the uh, NOx, uh, CO, and uh, all the SO2, etc. Yes, yes, yes. They are, uh, you know, they they keep all, all. We have to keep all the norms of CO, CO2, yeah. all those things. Uh, they, are they, they they come and visit us uh, very often. You have a pollution control board office in Palakkad who come there every month and uh, take all the readings. We are supposed to. maintain all the records very clearly they monitor us um, uh, all these uh, things are done uh, is it uh, at high temperature there will i think uh, there will not be any by products product plastic poly by phenyls or only co and co2 i think that's all o only oh. co and co2 okay thank you yeah thank uh, you the Yeah, another question from thank you, uh, uh, thank you uh, for the question. Another question from the chat box is from Mr. Binoj Nair. Who is uh, the question is who is responsible if the vehicle transportation uh, uh, of biomedical waste unfortunately met with accident and all biomedical waste got exposed to environment? And all uh, the he, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for raising that question. All I told you about seventy-two vehicles which are flying on the road from Parasala to Kasaragod. Uh, this is these are all specially made vehicles, special uh, with fully covered vehicles. Uh, these uh, all vehicles are fitted with GPS, so we know where uh, it is located. And if it comes across an accident or something, we have a system by which uh, uh, you know. uh don't think all the 72 vehicles are coming to palakkad with their this thing so we have uh, uh, about uh, 15 transfer locations in different parts of kerala where because these vehicles all uh, big vehicles cannot go to the remote places where they can collect uh, the waste from so we have smaller vehicles which go there and at the end of the day they bring the waste and it is being transferred to a big work so uh, uh, all these 72 are not coming to palakkad so maybe uh, 20 or 25 workers are coming to palakkad from different parts of uh, kerala uh, the rest is coming to the transfer station where it is being transferred to the larger vehicle and uh, by any chance if it comes across uh, vehicle we have uh, always keep we always keep a few 
vehicles extra in various different locations so that uh, it goes there and collect uh, transfer the waste into that uh, uh, vehicle that is how it is taken care of i hope i have answered your question hello Yeah. Another question is, uh, do you have a deaerator tank between settling tank and clarifier for treatment? Can you repeat that question? Do you have a deaerator tank between settling tank and clarifier for treatment? For <laughs> effluent treatment, that is what? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I cannot. And I, I mean, <laughs> see, the problem with us is we are uh, technically uh, uh you know not qualified in this we are uh, basically medical people we have learned from uh, our own experience uh, all these things i can only tell you the minimum uh, technical aspects of it i try to find it out from somebody and uh, we'll get back. yeah thank you uh, doctor for that uh, uh, answer and uh, uh, another the next question is how much does image charge per hospital I think you uh, have described I, in your presentation. Yeah, I, I told you the, there are two types of uh, fees which we charge from the hospitals. One is the affiliation fees and the second is service charge. Uh, the affiliation fees is one-time payment that is depending on the number of beds in the hospital. Say, for example, uh, a hospital with uh, 20 beds, uh, it is 1,500 into 20. Now, regarding the smaller uh, clinics, it is 6,000 rupees uh, affiliation fees and 860 rupees per month as service charges. Now, in government uh, institutions, uh, we, have, we don't charge any affiliation fees, but the service charges, they have to pay 6 rupees 10 pies per bed per day. And in private hospitals, it is uh, uh, 6 rupees uh, 45 pies. I hope uh, it's clear to you. Yeah, thank you, uh, doctor. And uh, the final question in the chat box is, does image face any resistance from local po population for bringing hospital waste from different parts of Kerala? I agree. I agree. I ഈ അടുത്ത സമയത്ത് ത്രീ പിടിച്ച് പാലക്കാട് ഞാൻ ചെന്നപ്പോൾ അവിടെ ലോക്കൽ എം എൽ എ എം പി എ എല്ലാവരെയും കണ്ടിട്ട് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ദയനീയ അവസ്ഥ പറഞ്ഞു പുതിയ പ്ലാന്റുകൾ കേരളത്തിൽ ഇനിയും വരണം സാധിക്കുമെങ്കിൽ എല്ലാ ജില്ലയിലും വരണം എന്ന് ഞാൻ ആവശ്യപ്പെട്ടു ആവശ്യപ്പെട്ടപ്പോൾ ആ എം എൽ എ ഞാൻ പേരും നാളും ഒന്നും പറയുന്നില്ല പക്ഷെ എന്നോട് നേരിട്ടും എൻ്റെ മുഖത്ത് നോക്കി പറഞ്ഞത് നിങ്ങളല്ലയോ ഈ തീ പിടിപ്പിച്ചതെന്നുള്ള ചോദ്യമായിരുന്നു അപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ എന്തിനാ ഇതിന് തീ പിടിപ്പിക്കുന്നതെന്ന് ചോദിച്ചപ്പോൾ പുള്ളി പറഞ്ഞത് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് അത്രയും കാശ് ലാഭമായല്ലോ കത്തിച്ച് കളഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് അപ്പൊ ഈ കോടിക്കണക്കിന് രൂപ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ലാഭം അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ ചോദിച്ചു അങ്ങനെയാണെങ്കിൽ സാറേ ഞാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ ഇത് എല്ലാം കൂടി ഇട്ട് കത്തിക്കേണ്ട കാര്യമില്ല എന്ന് കുറച്ചെ കുറച്ച് എല്ലാ ദിവസവും കത്തിച്ചാൽ മതിയായിരുന്നല്ലോ ഞാൻ എനിക്ക് സഹി കേട്ടപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ നാളെ തന്നെ ഇത് പൂട്ടിയേക്കാം ഈ പ്ലാന്റ് എന്തായാലും ഇത്രയും തീ പിടിച്ചു നാളെ തന്നെ പൂട്ടിയേക്കാം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു അപ്പൊ പുള്ളിയുടെ ഉടനെ ഉള്ള മറുപടി നിങ്ങളോട് പൂട്ടാനായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ പൂട്ടാനല്ലോ ആവശ്യപ്പെട്ടത് നിങ്ങൾ ഈ വേസ്റ്റ് എല്ലാം കൂടെ എടുത്തോണ്ട് പാലക്കാടിന് വരുന്ന എന്തിനാ എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇതാണ് നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിലെ പ്രോബ്ലം ഇവിടെ വി ആർ പ്രിപ്പയർ ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് എ പ്ലാൻ ഇൻ എനി ലൊക്കേഷൻ ബട്ട് അണ്ടർ ആൻഡ് അൺലെസ് ദ ഗവൺമെന്റ് കോപ്പറേറ്റ്സ് ദ ലോക്കൽ പീപ്പിൾ കോപ്പറേറ്റ്സ് സി നോട്ട് ഈവൻ എ ഡ്രോപ്പ് ഓഫ് വാട്ടർ ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ട്വന്റി ത്രീ ഏക്കേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ലാൻഡ് വിച്ച് ബി ഹാവ് ഗോട്ട് ഇൻ പാലക്കാട് ഒരു തുള്ളി വെല്ലം പോലും അങ്ങോട്ട് പോകുന്നില്ല പക്ഷെ അവിടെയും പറഞ്ഞുണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് ആനയുടെ കാലയിൽ സൂചി കുത്തി കയറി എന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് ഇമാജിൻ ഈ നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടില് ഒരു പ്രസ്ഥാനം പോലും മര്യാദയ്ക്ക് നടത്താൻ ആരും സമ്മതിക്കത്തില്ല അത് എങ്ങനെയെങ്കിലും പൂട്ടിച്ചേ അടങ്ങത്തുള്ളൂ എന്നുള്ള ഇപ്പൊ പൂട്ടിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ വിവരം അറിയും കാരണം കേരളം മുഴുവൻ നാറും ഈ പ്രസ്ഥാനം പൂട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഇപ്പൊ രാഷ്ട്രീയക്കാരും എല്ലാരും നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ നിൽക്കുന്നത് ഒരു ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ വേ ഒരു കാര്യവും ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല വി ആർ ഫോളോയിങ് സ്ട്രിക്ട്ലി ദ നോംസ് പ്രിസ്ക
state pollution control board as well as the government as well as the central pollution control board but there is always a finger pointed at you asking ningal alle kathichathu idana chodyam ee chodyathin aaru uttaram parayum you know yan i am basically a medical man but uh, because of the association activities i am uh, looking up to the plan now but i don't know how far uh, we will proceed like this this is the biggest biggest headache for us i hope uh, i have answered this yeah thank you doctor for uh, the clarification uh, 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 any, anybody has uh, any other queries to ask feel free to ask Hmm. Yeah, we don't have uh, further questions in the chat box, uh, and uh, now uh, we are coming to the end of the session. Uh, and before uh, uh, going for the uh, 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 word of thanks, uh, I would like to uh, extend uh, my. Uh, 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 uh gratitude for having an excellent uh, uh, speaker over here uh, bringing about the various aspects of image uh, dr abraham argis uh, uh, has started his uh, uh, talk with uh, the uh, expansion of image indian medical association goes eco friendly uh, he has described us about the needs of biomedical waste management then about the hazards the handling requirements then what the, is the basic legislation uh, which is applicable in the biomedical waste management the three important uh, aspects in that uh, biomedical waste management rules 2016 uh, he has uh, elaborated on uh, 85% is non uh, biomedical waste but 10 uh, plus 5% of infectious. infectious and infectious and hazardous waste yeah 85 percentage is non uh, infectious, infectious or non biomedical waste but uh, 10 plus 5 percentage of uh, infectious as well as uh, biomedical uh, means hazardous waste yeah. coming together keeps that 100 percentage together as biomedical waste he has also told about 50 to 60 tons of waste coming every day for the plant for, uh, to the plant for uh, uh, treatment described the various methods of treatment including incineration shredding uh then uh, autoclaving and then uh, disposal uh, of all those things uh, uh, told about the yellow blue uh, white and uh, uh, red categories of waste segregation and handling how the transportation of biomedical waste in 72 vans are happening everything has been described in de- detail so thank you sir thank you for the excellent session uh, i now uh, invite uh, uh, mr radha krishnan the deputy general manager of uh, carbon Rem- carbon and universal uh, limited maniar plant uh, to extend his uh, vote of thanks over to you mr radhakrishnan very good evening to you all now we are coming to the end of a great a wonderful session actually it gave me immense pleasure to be a part of this wonderful session our distinguished speaker dr abraham bargis has made this learning session more vibrant and energetic throughout with the reflection of his passion and commitment on the subject and it has reflected very much when he was answering the final lap of questions sir actually the participants were fortunate to have such an eminent resource person with rich experience in the field not only the occupational safety when uh, something like an industrialist and uh, more a public uh, in a, in a public uh, and an expert in public health actually really it was an enlightening opportunity for the entire participants on behalf of hsc forum and uh, nsc kerala chapter may i extend our gratitude to dr abraham bargis for sparing this valuable time with us and sharing his inspiring thoughts and valuable experience thank you doctor thank you very much sri umar our former joint director of factories and boilers department made a fine starting of this program with his excellent opening remark on behalf of 
HSC Forum and NSC Kerala chapter, may I request our gratitude to Sri Omar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Vipin Das, our organization member who actually took over as, uh, at, uh, this role in very short time, but he managed very well and uh, did an excellent show. Now, thank you, Mr. Vipin, for, uh, for uh, doing a wonderful job. Asset team. Thank you. Lot, thank you. Thank you. Uh, asset team, lot of efforts and supports are there from the organizing team of HSE Forum and NSC for realizing this program. Thank you very much for the guidance and support of the Honorary Secretary, Dr. Ramesh, and our HSE convener, Sri Nayan Nandakumar. And thank you, all the support and effort all we put together to make this a grand success. And finally, thank you all the participants for sparing a, a prime of your, a prime time of your weekend for this uh, learning session. Thank you, thank you all for being with us for this uh, good program. Thank you all. Yeah, we are wide. Thank we are. Thank you, Mr. Radhakrishnan, uh, for the warm uh, uh, word of thanks. And we are winding up the session, and uh, we will be here uh, tomorrow at the same time uh, with another another session. Till then. Bye to all of you and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.